I spent months trying to come up with an easy way to measure the slew rate. And uh, what I found was interesting. But here's the thing, the method needs to be validated. Let me show you what I found and why I'm getting an oscilloscope to see how accurate the method is. Slew rate is simply the rate of change of torque over time. Usually people think the higher the number, the better it is. I disagree. Once you're past a certain threshold, other factors matter more for how the wheel feels. I've always wondered if advertised slew rate numbers would actually be achievable in real life. I wanted to see how much of a real life loss would be there and how impactful it is when racing, as it is casually tossed around in discussions. But the harsh reality is, measuring slew rate accurately without any equipment is quite hard. It's almost impossible. Manufacturers have access to lab grade equipment, which many of us don't have access to. A few of those who do, do not have multiple wheelbases. A regular curious person has absolutely no way to test it or measure it at home without needing any equipment. And that is who I am, a regular curious person with no equipment. So I wanted to see if I could find a way to measure it without any equipment. My method was simple. Use the lowest possible degree of rotation in the wheelbase of software with zero filters to see what numbers I could extract. I used iRacing force feedback test and did linear time step test. Since I was dealing with electronics and they have inherent timing variations and processing delays, I ran the test 7 times. After each test, a CSV file gets generated in which there is time, start x which is the starting position, end x the ending position, delta x change in position and delta x degrees which is change in position but in degrees. An important question comes forth. If there were no torque values, how did I calculate slew rate? You see, movement in the shaft happened because of the torque. And since the movement was controlled and precise, I found that angular displacement correlated with torque in this setup. It's not always the case. Angular displacement and torque do not scale linearly. They are two different things, but here they correlated. A simple example, while gaming, the wheelbase will output torque and depending on what is happening, you will hold on to the wheel, thereby restricting any movement. So now you see, torque happened, but displacement did not. Which is why I said that normally they don't scale linearly. But in that test, they scaled. Actually, they did not scale, they correlated perfectly. So I simply had Python assume the position values as torque values. And what came out the other end was surprising. I began my testing on Acetec La Prima because its slew rate was advertised at 4 Newton meters per millisecond. I removed all the filters, maxed out the slew rate and did my test. Now slew rate is measured in a controlled environment with the shaft locked. Weight and inertia of the rim aren't accounted for, unless specified, which is never. So I used the La Prima F1 rim which weighs 1.4 kilos. Being aware that this will impact the results, I did the test anyways and got an average of 2.969 Newton meters per millisecond with a peak of 3.4 Newton meters per millisecond at 360 degrees. In ideal driving condition, the rim rarely exceeds one rotation, so 360 was enough. Despite having a 1.4 kilo rim attached to it, which heavily impacts the slew rate, the results were actually quite impressive and close to the advertised number. Since I found the data to be a bit reliable, I moved on to Thank you. I moved on to Conspit Aries Platinum. Its advertised slew rate is 9.5 Newton meters per millisecond, which is very fast, very fast. I attached the 300 GT to it, which weighs 1.3 kilos, and did the test at the lowest degree of rotation, that is 180. The base behaved normally and the test was completed. I got an average of 1.8891 Newton meters per millisecond with a peak of 2.0696 Newton meters per millisecond. At 360 degrees, I got an average of 2.1318 Newton meters per millisecond and a peak of 2.2120 Newton meters per millisecond. Now I know what you're thinking. Either my test is invalid or Conspit's claims are. But actually, Conspit is in the clear. Let me explain. When I tested the wheelbase powered off versus powered on, I discovered something fascinating. 
Powered off, one gentle push makes the shaft rotate quite easily. Powered on, the same push does not move it much. When it is powered on, the virtual inertia, friction and electromagnetic braking from the back EMF kicks in, resulting in this, even when the filters are zero. On surface, this may seem like the inertia and friction stops the wheel from rotating. It must feel awful. But it's actually quite the opposite. To me, it feels great. It has a perfect balance of responsiveness and details. If the virtual inertia and friction is removed or toned down significantly, I am confident the slurette result will show better numbers. I am guessing anywhere from 5 to 7, 7.5 Newton meters per millisecond. They are deliberately limiting the hardware so they can deliver proper feel. But then again, I don't think they should get rid of it just so higher slew rate numbers could be achieved. That would be like taking a step backwards or disrupting the balance. I very much like how this wheelbase feels. But again, that's my opinion. You may not like how this one feels or how this base automatically became garbage to some people ever since Evo Pro came out. You know, uh, to each and their own. But one thing became clear. Acetec's advantage isn't necessarily better hardware. It is better software control that lets user access full hardware capability across all rotation ranges. Conspit does not give you that option. Basically, they are trying to mimic the force of a real car. And I think they are doing a fine job. Real life cars don't have a slew rate specification because they don't use motor to create steering feedback. The steering wheel is mechanically connected to the wheels through steering linkages. It's a reactive system, not an active system. Moving on, I then tested the Alpha U. Its slew rate is not disclosed. I attached GT Neo to it, which weighs 1.5, almost 1.5 kgs. The lowest degree of rotation achievable is 90 degrees. But again, the wheelbase started acting strange at both 90 and 180 degrees. So I moved on to 360 and got an average slew rate of 1.6387 Newton meters per millisecond and a peak of 1.7523 Newton meters per millisecond. Next, I tested the Evo Pro with GT Neo as well. This one also does not have its slew rate disclosed and behaved similarly at 90 and 180 degrees, so 360 degrees it is. I got an average of 2.0201 Newton meters per millisecond and a peak of 2.1497 Newton meters per millisecond. So what did all of this tell me? Uh, well, for starters, I'll admit that I have a bit of soft spot for Alpha U. And despite it being old and not having that much slew rate based on my test, I did manage to break my Bathurst lap record in under 10 laps by two tenths of a second. Now I'm not saying that slew rate is irrelevant, I'm saying that I forgot. Um, yeah, I'm saying that it does not tell you the full story, it is just <laughs> it is just one physical limit and a chain of electronics, firmware and mechanics, that, that is what I'm saying. Um, but my point is, a lot of people use Alpha U and are perfectly happy with it. Not because it has a slew rate of almost 2 Newton meters per millisecond, but because it just has enough to react to changes. Now you can argue with me that a higher slew rate number is always beneficial. But at the end of the day, it's going to be subjective. And also, I don't think the advertised slew rate numbers are actually achievable while gaming. Think of it this way. Most road going cars have an advertised horsepower output that is at crank, not wheel. Even if you buy a car which, let's say, has 100 horsepower, how much of it do you think you will actually be able to use on a daily basis? 40, maybe 50. Even if you're pushing, you won't reach 100 horsepower because tire pressure, surface elevation, wind resistance, condition of the vehicle, n number of things are at play here. System level losses are universal across the industry. Even if Conspit claims 9.5 Newton meters per millisecond, the odds of the base actually reaching there while gaming are very slim. I don't think it's possible. There will be filters, your hands, and it will affect the peak and average slew rate. Now objectively speaking, Evo Pro is a better base than Alpha U for a few reasons, but not because it has higher slew rate numbers. 
Similarly, Acer Tech is also a great base, but we cannot declare it better simply because it has higher numbers than Evo Pro. Torque delivery, the ability of the base to dynamically adjust the rate of change of torque, the effectiveness, all of it matters. Slew rate is just one tiny part which should not be focused on when making purchase decisions. Now before we get too excited, let me be completely honest about the limitations of this approach. Angular displacement does not equal torque. Fundamentally, these are different physical properties that should not correlate linearly. Software dependency. My method relies on iRacing's force feedback test, which is a synthetic test. Different sims will behave differently, resulting in varying results. Wheel inertia effects. I tested with the wheel attached, which manufacturers don't account for. Then system measurement versus motor capability. I'm measuring end-to-end -end performance, not raw motor specs. And the final one, unvalidated methodology. I could be measuring something completely different than slew rate. Advertised slew rate does not account for the weight and inertia of the rim. What I found could be the best case real life data without any filters and any human interaction. When it comes to categorizing sim racers, I like to believe there are two types. One who simply wants to have a good time and the other who wants to extract maximum performance from a wheelbase. If you are in the former, literally any wheelbase is good for you. Market has evolved. Most of the wheelbases out there have plenty of slew rate to react to changes. If you are in the latter, the data might help you. If you are somewhere in between, I can't help you. Make up your mind. Feels wrong. <laughs> Anyways, my point is, if you are in the market and you want to buy a wheelbase, slew rate should not be the deciding factor. It matters, but probably not in the way that you think you do. Instead, focus on more important aspects, such as the ecosystem, build quality, warranty, and the overall feel. Because at the end of the day, if a wheelbase feels right, nothing else matters. This journey taught me that the most interesting discoveries come from trying to solve simple problems. Whether this methodology works or not, it has opened fascinating questions about wheelbase physics that deserve proper investigation. And for that, I'm working my way towards acquiring a full test bench. But like I was saying, whether my method proves valid or not, either way, I would have learned something. And honestly, that is what makes this hobby so exciting. Each attempt to try to understand these machines, even when we are completely wrong, teaches us something. That's been it. I've been the Napman and may the downforce be with you.